啊、uh, ，OK， so， 呃、uh, ，大家好，你好，我叫阿里，啊、uh, ，我今天其实呃、uh, 想跟跟你们介绍一下我自己，然后我们可以做一些讨论，啊、uh, ，我是呃、uh, 我在中国已经二十多年了，然、uh, 后我估计我比你们已经在中国更长一点时间，就是说过了二十五年，我估计你们还不到二十五岁是吧？啊、uh, ，反正我是巴西三人。啊、uh, ，一直都在中国，大部分的我的我的年龄就是都在中国啊， uh, 一部分的时间在北京，另外一部分在上海，然后在广告行业工作的，啊、um, ，然后其实我我就是想花一点时间跟你们讨论，怎么可以在这个 course 啊、uh, 有跟 Jonathan 更好的一个合作，然后你们怎么可以。呃，学习一下，就是说 ，Jonathan 会跟你们分享的一些呃一些内容和一些想法。对，我其实已经在在啊、呃，我怎么我怎么到的这个行业呢？也不是说是一个选择啊、呃，但是我我原来在在在北在北京的时候，其实我们从呃，从呃一个工作的角度，呃，有机会啊、呃，我觉得我们我们这些老外在在中国，呃，最简单最容易，就是九六年九九年的时候最容易找工作呢，就是这个广告的这个行业，不是我的选择，但是我到了这个行业，我觉得。特别好玩，因为每天你会有好多好多机会，跟不一样的一些客户、不一样的品牌，啊、呃，看怎么可以用这个创呃创意和广告的这个这个行业解决他们的一些呃一些 business 的一些问题。所以，所以我我我是来的这个行业，就是呃从这个一个流程。Yeah, I, I, you know, it's I kind of really enjoy, and I think this is we're at the cusp of 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 a big change, at least in advertising.、Um, actually, no, in most of the things that we do,、um, and a lot of that change is being driven by artificial intelligence and technology. And companies、um, like like ours,、um, I work for one of the world's largest advertising holding group,、um, and. Big clients favor large advertising holding groups, and they favor those companies, those larger holding groups, because because they they trust that they are able to lead them towards a future state、um, in the way they communicate with their customers, with their consumers.、Um, and I worry a lot as well of how. Um, you know how、um, companies like WPP are advertising companies. The you know hundred thousand employees that we have around the world will adapt to the change that we see around ourselves.、Um, and creativity conventionally has always been something that、um, you know that's that's uh, that's uh, human born. Ideas have always been human engineered. Um, we've never had to intermediate for te with technology for an idea,、um, or at least for creative expression. And the pace at, at which advertising or communications is being influenced by artificial intelligence and by technology requires people like myself,、um, Angela, and, and many others to help guide clients、um, on that transformation journey. Uh, in making choices on the types of technology they should embed or include, so that they can intermediate with um, um, with consumers, and that basically means, um, um, uh, uh, you know, and it's and it's very similar to、uh, the challenge that you're facing, or you know, that you mentioned earlier with the with you know on photography, and、um, this 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 distributed sort of journalism,、um, you know, the same is happening in advertising. You know, ownership of what what brand is and what brand means, and it, it's it's no longer、um, designed by advertisers. It's no longer designed by、um, by companies like ours. We can only facilitate,、uh, 
Um, but a lot, you know, a, a lot of what a brand means and how successful um, a, a brand is, um, you know, that's that's really up to the consumer. That's really up to people like yourselves, um, of whether you 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 like what it whether you believe in what it does, whether it actually does what it says it does, um, whether you you know decide to talk about it, share it with someone else. Uh, 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 you know the the I mean, without sounding very preachy, I think you know the the you know people like myself and many others um um you know try to solve those problems for different types of products that um historically have not been you know are not adapted to the world we live in and and taking them and 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 everyone within their you know the marketing organization the technology organization the finance organization with those within those companies to to accept a new way of communicating consumers, a new source, you know, new ways of generating revenue is very, very difficult. So, so you need people like myself and many others to help intermediate on behalf of both the consumer, but also on the company and, and, and the brands that, you know, people have known to love and, 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 uh, and, and buy. So, um, so yeah, so, so that's what, that's what I do. Yeah, uh, so when we talk about distributed, um, you know, when, so we're talking about how how ownership of brands has kind of moved away from the from the hands of advertisers into the hands of of consumers, um, and um, and a, a big part of the success or failure of a brand obviously is measured by how consumers um, and audiences are engaged with that brand and. And I use that term quite loosely, you know, um, comparing consumers um, uh, or, 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 you know, labeling consumers audiences and, and sometimes audiences become consumers. Um, and, and the reason for that is that when you put something out into the Internet, it stays. Um, once upon a time when we had linear television uh, or linear broadcast TV, there was only one message being delivered. And. And when it was delivered, it was, you know, it was there and that's it. And and if you heard it, you heard it. And if you didn't, then you missed out, you know, where you'd hear it from a neighbor, you'd hear it from a friend. But if today we advertise um, or we talk about, um, you know, real beauty, um, if I'm Dove, which is, a, um, which is a soap brand, whatever piece of content Dove sends out, it stays. Um, and you know, and it's in, you know, it's 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 in competition with every other piece of content that exists alongside, on every single platform that exists out there, and it will continue to kind of emerge over over the years. So as advertisers, you're building on what already exists, um, and so brands are no longer, you know, they're not. There's there's never going to be one face of a brand. It's you're you're going to be constantly building on top of what's already been made. And so there is, um, you know, it's when you when you talk about that in context of engagement, then, you know, it's not one way anymore. It's two way. It's it's a brand like Dove that interprets real beauty through the lens of how consumers understand beauty to be. And it's not cosmetic. It's not, you know, it's not um uh, you know it, beauty comes in different forms um and and it, and why should beauty ever be defined by you know by a glossy magazine so when brands understand that and they pull out advertising and they challenge the norms of what is conventionally viewed as beautiful then you have something that consumers will lean in and kind of participate and engage with so what we as advertisers do is facilitate an existing um, behavior. And this is something that actually a Unilever, um, so Dove is a, a Unilever brand and a Unilever client told me many, many years ago. And he said, Ali, you can't um, force behavior. You can only um, um, work with the mold of how consumers behave. And and if you understand that, 
then you'll get a lot more receptivity. And when you start talking about receptivity, then you're not talking about shoppers, but you're talking about audiences. And if you understand audiences, then you're constantly going to be building sequels um, to what um, you know what what your brand stands for. Um, and then you know that just kind of changes what advertising is. Um, and it also changes or it, it forces us as advertisers to rely on technology to help us understand what the what the current and the future face of beauty is. And it will be different for someone in Africa. It will be different for someone in South Asia. It'll be different for someone in um, in uh, in Latin America. But being at the cusp of what that will be and knowing how to mold it so that you can engage with consumers in those markets becomes really, really important. Anyway, that's what makes my job really exciting. Um, and uh, but it also worries me a lot as well, because when information and knowledge is distributed as distributed as it as it is today, then perhaps the next great idea um, that expresses real beauty will not come from a WPP company. It will come from anyone in, you know, in this audience today. And so if ideas, and I won't say cheaply, but at the end of the day, we need to put a commercial value on our ideas. But if ideas can just as easily be sourced from a master's degree student and not be priced, then I worry. So we need to, as a, as an advertising network, understand or figure out how to um, how to you know live with this distributed model, um, this open source model of generating ideas, translating it them into creative expression, and then delivering them timely to people that act that you know that are willing to engage with those ideas. So. Uh, um, and so there's, you know, there's, 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 there's commercial opportunity there uh, for advertising companies, but that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. So that's actually most, of, <laughs> that's 90% of my, my time at work. Um, so it's exciting, but it's also very worrying. China's the most technologically advanced country in the world. And there's a couple of things that make it that advanced. Um, it's as, as advanced as it is because of um, uh, of the digitization of every institution in that country, because it believes through digitization uh, it will continue to advance and be, um, you know, be competitive with the rest of the world. And what I mean by that is whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in banking, uh, and agriculture I refer to as farming, uh, or in financial services, or in aviation, or in um, astronomy, uh, in any imaginable you know, product innovation, um, cosmetics, all the way through to cars, uh, mobility, if, they're, you know, if they continue to digitize and continue to innovate, um, they will continue to be, you know, number one in that field or in that category. And, and, and something's happened over the last, you know, over the last 12 months. For the first time ever in the history of China, there's fewer people uh, in China today than there were a year ago. And, and China understands that. They understand in order for their people, and there's 1.4 plus billion of them in the world, for their people um, to continue to be at the forefront of innovation, they will continue to have to invest in digitization so that they're less reliant on 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 physical human beings uh, and and technology will work to their favor. And if we accept and understand, you know, and if we you know if we believe, and I think that there's a mindset to this as well. Um, if 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 we want to have an advanced society that is um, that you know that that uses technology to its favor, um, 
then there is collective effort that needs to be made, uh, decisive effort that helps transform both society um, uh, through through technology, both society and culture through technology. And, and, and that's what, you know, that's that's that that's what China is doing. And by doing that, you know, they they become a much more egalitarian um, society that, you know, that everyone is equally measured, that <laughs> uh, that, you know, there's no, you know, it's 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 it becomes impossible for for certain stratas of society. And even if that still exists today, I think to some extent, Xi Jinping is trying to work around that and he's trying to create a, a, a you know, some some. Uh, uh, you know, a, a future facing China that is that is more equal um, in terms of distribution of wealth. And that doesn't make that doesn't mean making people people less poor, but giving people equal access to opportunity and technology, he believes, will do that. So so if you look to it, you know, if we believe that the world's population um, will continue to expand but people may not necessarily have equal opportunity. There's a belief in China that technology will give them access to that opportunity. And by continuing to invest in that, you know, um, w w you know, whether it's China or it's its trading partners or it's, you know, yourselves in, in Europe at university over here, we'll continue to, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll benefit from that advancement. Um, I mean, I'm not a future teller or or a future sayer, but I just, you know, if you spend enough time in China, you you kind of lean towards it and you say, "Wow, I I truly believe in what's happening," and I really and it's and it's addictive, and so you become part of that. Um, um, so uh, so I would highly, you know, I would I would definitely, um, um, uh, uh, you know, recommend that you you find yourself, um, you know, or you engage with your Chinese colleagues and your classmates. And understand China better. Um, find an opportunity to visit China yourselves. Um, um, you know whether it's internships or it's 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 spending time in, with that culture. It'll it'll you, it'll it'll you know it'll give you a, a view that's very different to the one you have today. And and it'll make you I I don't know I wouldn't say make you a better person, but it, I think it'll definitely help un, uh, help understand um, you know that country and and that culture much better. Jonathan 影响我们几个中国同学的一些讨论 都有一个这个呃一个这个上海站的一个一个podcast，所以如果你们想听我们的一些想法， or uh, you know I also invite all of our uh, you know all of our international students. You know if you you know if you're curious about China and if you want to learn more about China, feel free to look us up. Um, and uh, you'll get an you'll get a bit of insight. You know I I definitely recommend that you get onto a plane, go to China, and figure it out for yourself. But we'll share whatever insight we can. There's a little bit that we we have to talk about on the show. So uh, yeah, Jonathan, thank you for having me. And uh, and I'm uh, you know if you have I'd be really happy to be back. And if you have any other questions or the class has any questions specific to China, feel free to throw them at me, and I'm happy to answer. Okay.